If you log into Overwatch right now, you will get a free Genji skin and an Overwatch Contenders player icon. But not only that, you can actually earn a new Symmetra and Mercy skin. And every month, there's going to be new skins that you can unlock with this new system. Now, what is going on here? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain the way the system works and I'm going to explain why this is massive for Overwatch. It is the first time that Tier 2 Professional Overwatch has been supported directly in the game and that's massive for the game okay so this is the genji skin you get the home and the away version now if you're a fan of the houston outlaws you're probably kind of familiar with the home color skin sort of setup but i think this is actually better because it, there's just more green on it like it, it just looks better i don't know i think that looks better these are the mercy and symmetra skins which you can earn and as you can probably guess these skins have got a very set design they are like fluorescent green and gray and white that is the style of overwatch contenders which are, personally i think is really good and you can earn these skins by just basically watching overwatch contenders through the contenders website i don't believe it works on the app but i am going to run through the q a which overwatch contenders have actually put out but this is sick like this is absolutely like it's so good this is because every character in the game has a home and away skin right this isn't just genji mercy and symmetra it's every single character has these skin variations which is just awesome okay so let's take a look at the details here ever wanted to rep overwatch contenders with some fresh green and white skins for your favorite heroes in the game starting today you can do just that as 2020 contenders season 2 kicks off we're giving everyone in eligible regions the contenders genji skin in both green and white so you can dragon blade like the best of tier 2 you'll also get access to a special player icon and an in-game spray. But that's not all. From now through 2021, the more Overwatch Contenders live content you enjoy on overwatchcontenders.com, the more Contenders skins you can collect. Each month during the Contenders season, a set of skins for two different heroes can be your reward for logging in to your Battle.net account on the Contenders homepage and enjoying a certain number of hours of Contenders live content. For example, here's how it will work in October. You will automatically receive a set of Contenders home and away Symmetra skins in your Battle.net account after enjoying seven hours of live Contenders content. When you reach 15 hours, you will automatically receive a set of Contenders home and away Mercy skins. Your hours will reset at the end of the month, so log in now to support Overwatch Contenders. Special moments in the competitive calendar for Overwatch Contenders, for example, Gauntlet, may feature event-specific incentives. Also, any player who qualifies for Contenders in any region will automatically receive access to the full set of Contenders skins. So let's take a look at the Q&A Overwatch Path to Pro, which is the official Overwatch Contenders Twitter account put out. Also, I should make a little correction. There were actually sprays in the game for Overwatch Contenders a while back. I think it's back in 2019. So I guess you could say that's maybe the first time it was supported, but not with this kind of direct level of support anyway. Okay, let's get stuck into this. So it says, here's some answers to a few FAQ around this a thread. So we're going to get a thread of these, so get ready. Uh, number one, rewards are able to be earned by logging in on the website only, not through any app. Now, this is crucial because if you do not go to the website, you will not get the rewards. I suffered from this with Overwatch League last year because I watch it on YouTube. I do not go to the Overwatch League website and I do not use the Overwatch League app. So I, I literally watched, I don't know how many hours of, of uh, Overwatch League and got no rewards for it, which is kind of annoying. I hope they fix that in future because surely YouTube should just give you the rewards. Number two, this program will roll out in China at a later date. However, the English localized broadcast of China, oh, well, Chinese contenders will be up on the website and will be eligible broadcasts. Three, this is live immediately. The first el eligible, bleh, that's a word, eligible broadcast is tonight's kickoff uh, of contenders career playoffs. Tune in at 11 p.m. PDT or 3 p.m. KST full schedule can be found here. And I'll put that link in the video description. And number four, we'll announce future pairs of heroes ahead of every month here on Twitter. So yeah, bit of incentive there to follow the Twitter. So what exactly is Overwatch Contenders and why 
Should we even really care about it? Well, let me try and explain, guys, because I have been on the ground floor with Overwatch contenders because I was involved with the setup of a team called British Hurricane. Now, back when I was involved with London Spitfire, I remember having discussions at the time about a contenders team that we could maybe set up. And eventually that turned out to be uh, British Hurricane, which well, like a hurricane is like almost the sister aircraft to the Spitfire. Um, so it made sense to kind of call it that. And that's the direction we went in. And at that time, Hurricane was a 50% British team. So it had 50% British players on, which if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, I've got a massive passion for British Overwatch talent. Like I've ran the Overwatch World Cup team every year since it's there's been a World Cup because I'm so passionate about promoting those players and giving them a chance to succeed. But that's where British Hurricane came from. And it was awesome. However, it had one problem. They could never ever make it to Spitfire because at the time Spitfire was a Korean team and it's very difficult to add players that are not Korean into Korean rosters. So yeah, I've got a lot of history with Overwatch contenders. Now, the reason why this matters for us as players of Overwatch and maybe as viewers of Overwatch League. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't watch Overwatch League. I mean, that's fair. People enjoy the games in different ways and that's completely fine. I watch a lot of Overwatch League just because I, you know, Overwatch, as, as kind of sad as this sounds, Overwatch sort of is my life. I do a lot of work on Overwatch. Obviously, I make loads of videos. I play loads of Overwatch. I watch loads of Overwatch. So I'm like really involved in everything that's going on around the game's sort of multiple ecosystems. So talking of ecosystems, Overwatch Contenders is this feeder division into Overwatch League. So the idea is anybody can start a team. This team then has the ability to take on other contenders teams. Then if it wins the contenders tournaments, it becomes known and the players become known. And then Overwatch League teams might go, you know what? I want to buy some of these players. Now that's currently the only financial incentive for a team owner. Now for somebody who wants to own an esports team, they need to make money because if you've got professional players, you're paying those players, you're paying your staff, you need some way of making money. And Overwatch Contenders has been absolutely terrible for revenue generation for teams. So if you increase the viewership, which is exactly what this will do, because by watching Overwatch Contenders matches, we will get skins. That then means sponsors might be more interested in Overwatch Contenders, and then they might actually start sponsoring the teams. And there's all kinds of knock-on positive effects that could actually come from that, which again, means it's more viable to run an Overwatch Contenders team. And of course, there could be additional things added to the game in future, stuff like extra monetization stuff. If they're willing to put contender skins into the game and uh, player avatars and stuff, then maybe they'll do more stuff in the future. You know, imagine if there was a Stylosa team, maybe it could have Stylosa branding in the game. And if players bought that thing, then the a fraction of the revenue went back to the team. You know, those kind of things might help. But here's the thing, guys. Why does any of this matter? You might be sitting there thinking, well, this doesn't really affect me. I don't really care. But here's the thing, with a better tier two infrastructure and tier two, all it means is exactly what it sounds like. It's the second tier of professional Overwatch play. Tier one is Overwatch League. So all the players who are in tier two want to get to tier one. Now, of course, there's tier three as well, which is things like Overwatch uh, Open Division. And even to get be considered as a tier three player, you need to be like top 500 guys. And at the top end of the competitive ladder, then you go tier three, then eventually you make it to tier two, and then hopefully you make it to Overwatch League. But yeah, why does this matter? Why, why should we care? Well, it means that we will get better players from tier two to go into Overwatch League, which means we'll get better Overwatch League games, which in turn means we'll get more interesting games to watch, which in turn means people that might not have been super interested in Overwatch League might start taking interest if the quality of the games increased, maybe if there was more players from their specific region. You know, I, I'm I'm not going, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit this. I love watching teams that have got British players. I watch Boston, I watch Valiant, I watch Philly. They've got British players on their roster. That's why I watch those teams. If there was more British players in the league, because there was a better tier two system, then I'd watch more Overwatch League, right? That's the kind of way to approach this. And I think the same goes, let's say if you were, I don't know, you could put any country here, let's say uh, South African, for example. If there were more South African players, maybe then in future, you could even get a South African Overwatch League team. So this is good for the game. The only criticism I've got for this is it's taken so long, you know? It would have been good if this was a few years ago, but at least we're starting to move into the right direction. 
Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then do consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, clicking the bell and all of that good stuff. And I will catch you guys on the next video. And remember, you can follow me on everything, which is at Stylosa Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff. Thank you guys. I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.